Thank you for worshiping with First Church. My name is Gary Eif, and I'm the associate pastor at First United Methodist Church in Johnson City, Tennessee, and I'm so glad that you are worshiping with us today. This is our eighth Sunday in a series we're calling The Ten, in which we are looking at the Ten Commandments and focusing our worship on, on these ageless commands from God. But each week as we take a look at a commandment, we're seeing that there's a little bit more to it than we might have always expected. That it's not just a rule or a burden for us, but that these commandments can actually be blessings, leading us to a free and full life. And so if you have missed any of the previous seven, you can go back and catch up online at YouTube or Facebook or even our website, firstchurchjc.org. So you can catch all of those sermons and all of those worship services and be able to watch all 10 of them and see how they fit together. And we hope that you will not miss out on any of these. Something else I don't want you to miss out on is a chance to worship together in person. If you're comfortable coming to church and, and gathering with us, we're going to continue our outdoor worship through the month of October. So if it's early on Sunday morning, you might still have time. If you can get here by 1030, don't forget to bring a mask and a chair to sit in. If there's rain or, or bad weather, then we'll probably move inside to the gym as a, a second chance for us to have worship together. We hope to see you at 1030 each Sunday in October. Now, as we enter into this time of worship online, I hope that you will join with us in singing the songs and saying the responses, that you will read the scriptures and pray the prayers with us, and I hope that you will find yourself in the presence of God. So let us turn our hearts to worship. Please join me in reading the call to worship. The Lord said, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt this is the land where you were slaves. Do not steal. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. Riches and honor come from God alone. We will give thanks to God and praise God's glorious name. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this day to offer thanks and praise for your great compassion and tender care. You created the world and all that is in it to show us your beauty and to sustain our lives. You gave us each other for friendship, compassionship, and community. Indeed, all you have created and entrusted to us is very good. Teach us to value the blessings we enjoy and to use the abundance we receive to better the lives of those around us. Grant us the courage to live in love in the way demonstrated by Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord your greatest gift, in whose name we pray. Amen. have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. 
When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. And when I think that God, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, in praying the prayer of confession. Gracious God, in great love, you have created and provided all that is necessary for each of us to live in peace and plenty. We confess that as we build kingdoms for ourselves, we might be thoughtless about the needs of others. Our words can erode someone's confidence and self-image. Our prejudice can count deaths, can cast doubt on someone's integrity and humanity. Our criticism can dampen someone's ambition and dreams. Our selfishness can threaten someone's future and security. Forgive us when our actions steal the joy from the lives of your people. Grant us courage, O oh God, to treat others as we wish to be treated, that our lives may bear witness to your unlimited grace and sacrificial love. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. God's love frees us from the world's bondage and allows us to live, love, and serve. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 29, verses 10 through 17. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, 
Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor, Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness and power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are the power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to make this free will offering? For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. For we are aliens and transients before you, as we were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope. Our Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand, and it is all your own. I know, my God, that you search the heart and take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all of these things, and now I have seen your people who are present here offering freely and joyously to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? In you, infinite God, we live and move and have our being. You have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We praise you and adore you, everlasting God. But we are creatures of dust who return to dust. In the morning, you wake us up into the thunder of life. In the evening, you sweep us away into the sleep of death. We are only mortals, mere transients in this world. Our days quickly pass and we fly away. We bow before you, everlasting God. Our times are in your hands because from everlasting to everlasting you are God. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom we need your guidance, everlasting God. You could condemn us with just cause. Because of our sin, you could consume us with your anger. Yet you surround us with compassion. Your unfailing love is all that we need. We thank you, everlasting God. May we sing for joy all our days. Bless our work and our lives so that we may testify to your glory. We worship you, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose prayer we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me, the voices 
dreams of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live. My life, let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved. With his power, he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved me. With His power. The Old Testament lesson for today continues in Exodus chapter 20 with verse 15. You shall not steal. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. About a year ago, camp in the community had three trailers stolen from a church parking lot. The trailers contained everything that they used for camp, including sporting equipment, craft supplies, games, electronic equipment, Bibles and study materials everything that they used as they traveled from church to church, community to community, serving children and youth who were in need. And we as a host church for Camp in the Community 
understand the, the impact that that ministry can have in the lives of children and youth. And we know just how devastating this loss must have been and continues to be for camp in the community. We probably also wonder about those people who stole from camp in the community. We wonder what kind of people they must be. We imagine them coming to that church parking lot under the cover of darkness, breaking the locks off the trailers and hooking them up to their own trucks and taking off with all of that valuable and meaningful equipment. Now, surely the trailers were the, the main thing that the, the thieves wanted to steal and they just didn't care about what was inside or what it was used for. And so we wonder what kind of people steal from a Christian camp? What kind of people steal from a church parking lot? What kind of people steal from God? They must be like extra evil, extra terrible kind of people, right? Well, before we start gathering a mob together and trying to hunt down these bad guys who stole these trailers, we need to stop and think. Maybe we shouldn't put the people who stole from camp in the community in some special sort of category of people who steal from God. Because stealing from God doesn't just happen in churches or to church things. The scriptures tell us that everything belongs to God. We read in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. And so as we look at this eighth commandment, do not steal, perhaps we need to expand our understanding of what stealing means in general and what stealing from God means in particular. Stealing, in its most basic sense, is claiming ownership of what is not rightfully yours. And when we recognize that everything belongs to God, stealing takes on a new meaning. In Leviticus, God instructs the people about jubilee and teaches that even the land should rest. God says, consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers. In these instructions, God is also reminding the people about their relationship to God's creation. God is telling them that they do not get to claim any part of the promised land as theirs because it and all of the earth belongs to God. Stealing is claiming ownership of what is not rightfully yours. And God is saying that everything, even the land, belongs not to us, but to God. This means that we are, are stewards or caretakers of God's property. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. In Deuteronomy, God told the people who were about to enter the promised land and receive a, a long promised blessing... God says, you may say to yourself, power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Whatever we have even when we have worked for it or earned it or obtained it rightfully, doesn't really belong to us. It belongs to God. 
For God is the one who gives us the ability to work. God is the one who gives us the knowledge, skills, and strength to accomplish things. Now, King David seems to understand that everything belongs to God, at least at this point in his life. We heard the reading from 1 Chronicles where David offers a prayer of blessing over the gifts and offerings for the temple. David says, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to make this free will offering? For all things come from you and of your own have you given us and have we given you. For we are aliens and transients before you as were all our ancestors. Our days on the earth are like a shadow and there is no hope. O Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for your building, building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and all is your own. Everything belongs to God and everything we have belongs to God. And if everything we claim as ours actually belongs to God, then we have claimed ownership of what is not rightfully ours. And in this way, it is more than just burglars who steal. Stealing is far more prevalent than we realize. The prophets spoke to Israel, to those who were wealthy, who lived in ease and comfort, that they were standing on the bodies of the poor. They had stolen their wealth from the poor, regardless of whether they had taken it by force, by injustice, or by shrewd dealing. Anyone who claims as their own, as their right, something that is someone else's is stealing. And even holding on to our goods as if they belong to us is claiming ownership of what is not rightfully ours. In Luke 3, the prophet John says, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. And in 1 John 3, We read, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Keeping things for ourselves that others need or taking more than our share are ways of stealing. Israel's crimes and the challenges of the early church are still our crimes and challenges today. We continue to steal and claim ownership of things that are not ours. Stealing is not just taking, but also keeping, hoarding, stockpiling, accumulating, and it is often fueled by greed. You may recall the story back in March of two brothers in the Chattanooga area who bought up nearly 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes and were selling them for extreme profit during the early days of the pandemic. That is obviously bad. And while they were not technically stealing, they had properly paid for all of those supplies, they were certainly taking advantage of a desperate situation. And it's pretty easy for us to see how that is stealing. But the situation does not have to be that extreme for us to steal from others. Even if we're not actually thieving anything from them. We steal 
when we stock up on lots of clothes and shoes for ourselves while our neighbors have nothing to wear. We steal when we withhold a tip from wait staff because we ordered the wrong thing or there was a mistake in the kitchen or we're just stingy. We steal when we spend all of our extra money on restaurants and entertainment and have nothing left to support the ministries of the church. We steal when we tolerate corrupt businesses that underpay workers and overcharge customers and keep all the profits for themselves. We steal when we accept the benefits of an unjust financial system that is designed to keep the wealthy rich and the poor in poverty. But God says, do not steal. God says, do not claim ownership of what does not rightfully belong to you. God says, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. It all belongs to God. And I know you know that. I know you do. Because we believe that it all belongs to God, we have a food pantry and Claire's closet to share what we have, to share what God has given us. Because we believe that it all belongs to God, we continue to support Camp in the Community and Camp Bays Mountain, even though they were not able to have campers this summer due to the pandemic. Because we believe that it all belongs to God, we give generously to the ministries of the church, providing funding for our children and youth, paying for building improvements and upgrading of equipment, supporting missions and outreach that share the love of Christ in the world. Even those brothers in Chattanooga seem to have a change of heart. They donated their stockpile of sanitizer to their church for distribution to first responders, medical personnel, and others in need of supplies. Now, maybe it was because they were being investigated by the Tennessee Attorney General, or maybe they had a genuine recognition that what they were doing was stealing and it could be hurting people. This commandment is given not just so that we keep our hands off of other people's stuff, but to help us recognize that all things belong to God and all stealing is stealing from God. We are only stewards of the gifts and talents and treasures that we have. And when we know that everything belongs to God, we know that there is enough. We don't have to, to take from others. We don't have to hoard for ourselves. We don't have to strive or scheme or manipulate or work the system to benefit ourselves and get everything we want. Instead, we can trust in God's abundance because God is enough. We can trust in God as the rescuer, the provider, the creator, the redeemer. The God in whose hands are the depths of the earth who owns the highest mountain peaks and the fullness of the seas, is the creator of all. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Everything, everything belongs to God, including you and me. We belong to God, and with God, 
we have everything that we need. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of all, thank you for all that you have given us. Help us to give and not take, to share and not hoard, to be generous and not greedy, that we may not steal from you or anyone else. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is enough and who is all that we need. Amen. I am not what I make. I am who you have made me to be. I am not what I've done. I am loved unconditionally. I am not loved by the measure of love that I bring I am not who I know, I am known by the King of all kings Jesus, you are in Satisfied simply by being who you've always been You are infinite love and you prove it again and again Jesus, you are enough Jesus, you are enough for me still have everything. Jesus, you are enough for me. Jesus, you are enough. Jesus, you are enough for me. With nothing, I still have
Jesus is enough and we don't need more. We certainly don't need to take things from others or to keep things that others need. God says, do not steal. Instead, we should share what we have because it all comes from God. Everything belongs to God, including you and me and everyone else. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I am not what I make, I am who you have made me to be. I am not what I've done, I am loved unconditionally. 